When processing our images, sometimes it's easier just to remove the stars to get to certain areas to make corrections or to run certain processes. And some workflows require that the stars be removed in order to process them individually. Thanks to RC Astro's Star Exterminator, we can accomplish this quickly and easily with just a couple of clicks of your mouse. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to easily and efficiently remove the stars from your image so you can perform certain processes that may be a little bit harder to do with the stars in the image. And in some instances, some workflows require that the stars be removed in order to process them individually. And we're gonna be doing this with RC Astro's Star Exterminator. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. We've covered a lot so far in this channel and we're nowhere near done. So stay tuned and let's head on over and learn how to use RC Astro's Star Exterminator. RC Astro's Star Exterminator is probably the easiest way to remove the stars from your image. But there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So when you're using it, what you're gonna do is go to process, all processes, and then open up Star Exterminator. And there's a couple of things that you can choose from here. You'll have generate star image, unscreen stars, and large overlap. Each of these check boxes does a different thing. And I'm gonna be completely honest, Large overlap, I have never found a reason to need to use that. Uh, it takes a very long time for the process to complete, and I do not see a difference at all when I use that versus any of the other two. Now, let's go through these two. Since these are the ones that we're going to primarily be using in our uh, workflows. Now, Checking unscreened stars, this is going to be used with a stretched image. So if you come across a situation where you've already put your stars back in and you realize, you know, for example, wait a minute, I want to give my nebula or galaxy just a little bit more saturation. I want to adjust something on my nebula or galaxy. What you would do is remove the stars using unscreened stars. You do not want to use unscreened stars on a linear image. When you are still in your linear state, which is going to be early on in your process or your workflow, you're going to use generate star image. This right here is going to maintain the colors of your stars a lot better than unscreened stars. Okay, so after you run SPCC and it does all of its calculations and gets your colors where they need to be, when it's time to remove the stars, just having generate star image checked is going to maintain those colors of the stars. Now, to put them back into your image, there's a little bit of a difference. After you remove the stars with generate star image, what you're going to do is use pixel math, and it's going to be your primary image name plus your star's image name. I'm going to demonstrate that in just a moment. So if you don't understand that, don't worry. When you have your stars removed using unscreened stars, so removing your stars after you stretched your image, we're also going to use pixel math, but it's going to be a different formula, which I'm also going to demonstrate. So let's take NGC 6960 for just a moment. The actual process is extremely easy. This right here is in its linear form. 
So we're just going to use generate star image. All you do, grab the little triangle and drop it on the image. And what it's going to do is create a separate image with just our stars and then leave the image, your primary image, without the stars. And as you can see, this image is called NGC 6960. I've already named that. So to name your image, all you do is right click on the image, go to identifier, and there's the image name. I'll unhighlight that so you can see it better. I put that in there. Now, let's go to, to the stars image. And you'll see once it removes the stars, it's going to take your primary image name underscore stars. Okay. Just for the sake of using the pixel math easier, I'm going to get rid of everything else except for stars. I'm going to hit OK. Now watch over here how the image name is right there. Hit OK. Now it's just stars. Now once we want to put this back in, we're going to go to process, all processes, and we're going to go to pixel math. And right over here, all we're going to type in is our primary image name, NGC 6960, plus stars. This is case sensitive, so make sure that if you have any uppercase letters in your image name, you reflect that here. So we have NGC 6960, our primary image, plus stars is our stars image. And we can either, under a destination, we can create a new image, which what it'll end up doing is leaving these two, your primary image and your stars image, alone and just create a whole new image. And then we can name that image. You know, just for example, let's just call it RGB. Color space, same as target. So I would leave that there unless you are... Um, combining mono images and you want a color image, I don't recommend doing it that way. I'll show you another way to do it. So for now, the sake of simplicity, uh, and we'll get into more complicated um, workflows and uh, process usage as we progress in this channel. So for sheer simplicity, pixel math, your primary image name plus stars or your star image name under destination we're going to rename the image rgb and for this example we'll create a new image grab the triangle drop it on and then what we'll do is bring out our screen transfer uh, screen transfer function 24 bit let's give this a stretch control a and there you go, it put the stars back in. Or if you just replace the target image, it's just gonna take the stars and drop them right in. Now, let's um, get rid of this really quick. Let's pretend for argument's sake, this is already stretched. So we're later on in our process, we realize, you know, I want a little bit more saturation on this nebula. Because it is stretched, we're going to unscreen and generate star image. Grab our triangle, drop it on. It works exactly the same. It's going to remove the stars and create a different image. And once these stars are removed, the process is going to be the exact same, except your pixel math formula is going to be different. So to give us some room, I'm going to get rid of star exterminator since we're done with that. 
and I already have the formula here. So grab your notepad, jot down this formula, and what you're gonna do, it's gonna work exactly the same. You can either replace your target image, remember that's gonna take your primary image and just put the stars back in without creating a new image, or, if you are worried you may not like it or you know you know you're afraid something might happen and you want to be able to go back create a new image name your image and if you're already in color you just same as target as you can see you can either create a new image in grayscale or rgb color okay so whichever one you want the new image to be and you, you just drag and drop. Now, when you're doing this, okay, when you're doing this formula, your stars image needs to have your primary image name in it. I'll show you exactly what I mean. My primary image, NGC 6960, my stars image, NGC 6960 underscore stars. Let's take a look at the formula. Your primary image, T, and then your primary image, T underscore stars. So let me show you what happens. Let's say, Let's say your primary image is uh, named NGC 6960. And, um, you know, let me do it this way. Let's say your, your primary image was 6960. And then all of a sudden you name your primary image Nebula. Okay. So here we have Nebula. And we want to put the stars image, NGC 6960 underscore stars back in. The formula will not allow that. Notice how nothing is happening. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename this NGC 6960. So it matches NGC 6960, NGC 6960 underscore stars. Now we grab the triangle, drop it on, and control A, and there you go. Same thing if we just replace the uh, target image, it just puts it right back in. Now we're going to cover how to do the Porsche I'm about to show you when we get into downloading everything. But um, if just in case you're already on PixInsight and this is something new to you and you've already brought up pixel math and jotted down this formula, uh, what you can do is, let me get rid of this right here. What you can do after you open up pixel math and jot down the formula, you can grab the triangle, drag it onto your workspace, hit this little top right section to rename it and name it, you know, whatever you want to name it. I have my name stars back, stars underscore back. So I know that formula puts my unscreened stars back in place. And this way you don't have to keep typing that tor that formula in every single time. And what you can do, delete that since I already have it over here. Once you have that icon with the pixel math formula on your workspace, all you do is go to process. You go to process icons, save process icons, put them in, you know, whatever folder you want to put them in. And I have my name color palette because I have my uh, color palettes over there. Do it save. And then um, instead of opening up PixInsight through your um, desktop icon, you just roll into the folder that you have it saved in and you just double click on the color palette. 
and it'll automatically bring up your um, icons. So I hope you found that useful. I hope you're getting excited to learn PixInsight. Um, do me a favor, that channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any future content. We're learning a lot. We still have a long way to go. Uh, drop a comment in the comment section. What questions do you have? Did you learn anything new? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies. Mm -hmm.